You are listening to True Crime Twins, a true crime podcast hosted by Chloe and Melina Cantor. True Crime Twins is produced by Crawlspace Media. Brianna Maitland disappeared at age 17 in Montgomery, Vermont on March 19, 2004. Bree had just finished her shift at the Black Lantern Inn and punched out at 11.20 and was witnessed leaving alone. Not long after, her vehicle was found backed into an abandoned farmhouse called the Dutchburn Place just a little over a mile down the road. Some personal belongings of Bree's were strewed about the ground, two car doors were left open, and headlights were left on. There has been no sign of Bree since, despite many tips and rumors. On episode one, Melina and I discussed the basics of this case and we talked about our theories and some of the key players. In this episode, I had the pleasure of speaking with Katie Manning, who provided her insight on the case, on Brianna, and all of the developments. Thank you for listening. I guess I should say true crime twin because it's just me, Chloe, today. I am here with Katie Manning, a very special guest, to talk about Brianna Maitland. We covered her case um, the last episode on our season two premiere. And we're going to do a couple of episodes to follow up because, as our listeners know, it is a very complex and interesting case, and there's a lot to it. So I'm really happy to have Katie here. Uh, how are you doing, Katie? I'm good. I'm good. Happy to be here. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> I'm happy to have you. It's been a while. We last had like a formal interview a couple of years ago. Um, so thank you so much for coming back. Uh, to get started, do you want to kind of just introduce yourself and introduce yourself as far as how you know Brianna? Sure. Um, uh, as Chloe said, I'm Katie Manning. Um, Brianna Maitland and myself were very good friends um, in high school, of course, because she went missing when we were 17. We went to two different schools together. We were able to switch together and kind of help each other through that. Um, Yeah, she's my buddy. (laughs) And I didn't realize that you made that change together. For some reason, I thought that she made that change to be closer to you. But like I switched and it was a matter of days before she came as well. So, (laughs) Okay. okay. And you two actually first met on the school bus, like on the first day of school, right? And uh, this is like my favorite story. So I'm just going to ask you to, to tell it again. Cause it's like, honestly, when you told that story, I felt like I could actually like, like just kind of imagine what kind of girl Brianna was. Yeah. So um, I had been a naughty teenager myself and had gotten myself into foster care, um, proving a little too rebellious for my poor mother So I started a new school and I was, of course, nervous as anyone is. I think it was my, my sophomore year. Um, So I got on the school bus, nervous as all get out. And as I walked, I don't know, maybe four or five seats in, there was this beautiful girl just beaming as she had teeth for days, smiling so big. And she scooted over and patted her seat next to her. And she's like, why don't you stay here? And I sat with her and we immediately kicked off. She complimented every little bit of me. <laughs> um, and she she made it okay to be starting somewhere new. Yeah, she did. She was very welcoming, very bubbly, very funny. It almost sounds like, like a mutual love at first sight story. Like the way that she, you said you could see all her teeth and like she was really beaming at you. It's like she saw you and she was like, oh my God, like this is yeah. my friend. <laughs> and I was like, yay! <laughs> So was it her? Was she new too, or no? She was just really nice and yeah. loved you immediately. <laughs> Thankfully, yes. <laughs> and what was she like as a friend? Um, she was very, very caring. She was. She'd put those she cared about above herself any any time, any day. Um, she would literally be the girl that would take her shirt off and hand it to you if needed um, or if not needed. <laughs> she, uh, she made you happy. She was very radiant. You couldn't not vibe with her energy. She was very powerful energy. 
she lit rooms up for sure. <laughs> when you, you said the thing about the shirt off her back, I saw this picture and it was of her, you, Keely, and I, and another female that I, I didn't immediately recognize, but she's bent over and it looks like her shirt is like over her head and everyone in the picture is laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, Leanne Leach. That's the other girl in the picture. <laughs> I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So you were the same age, right? Both 17 when she went missing? Yeah. Yeah. She's a couple months older, but yeah. Okay. So you went to Enosburg Falls High School together. She even lived with you at a point. So you two were like very, very close friends. What were your favorite things to kind of do together? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, just be goofy. Um, around Halloween, we, uh, it wasn't even Halloween. We probably still had a month to go, but we found this huge pumpkin. I don't know if we bought it or we took it. I really, I don't know. I don't know, but it was huge. And we ended up putting it in her big boat of a car. We took it home to my mom's house and we dug this pumpkin out and it was so big that with Bree sitting in it, I could still stand in it. And we thought that was like the coolest thing in the whole world. I mean, we just, random goofy things is kind of our jam. We tie a, a snowboard to the back of her big car and drive down the road, pulling friends for fun. Like, uh, you gotta stay busy up here in the woods, you know? <laughs> and your own fun. <laughs> <laughs> and she was very good at it. <laughs> very good at it. So she pretty much like the only one in your friend group that had a car yeah yeah that's kind of seems to be like when I was talking to Keely she said that she was kind of the driver like she would take you all to to Mike's house and to different places and that was like the iconic vehicle sort of thing very recognizable that's that's Priyana's light green boat <laughs> yeah the boat and it would fit all of us because we were all itty bitty teenagers at the time so we could cram 20 people in the car if we needed to <laughs> oh all these illegal happenings I'm talking about <laughs> well, I think the statute of limitations is probably expired right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and when, when you say we you're say, you're talking about uh, yourself Bri Brianna Keely Meg Sydney Hillary yep. is that is that right yep okay so that that's the, ladies. <laughs> that's the ladies that's the ladies and Hillary's brother is James, um, who has since passed away, unfortunately. And I know that you're close with that. I know you've been friends with both of them. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, and then Keely's boyfriend is Mike. So did you all frequently spend time at Mike's house or was that just every now and then? It was frequent. That was kind of like the go-to spot didn't matter what time you can three in the morning if you wanted to go you'd go not that I went at three in the morning but <laughs> some people did it right. was a flop house a party house a... yeah yeah and if and if someone in that group is dating him it, it would be natural to go so was it like every weekend would you say or at least at least yeah, yeah. was there anywhere else that you guys like to hang out um, at the time, my older brother, my mom has a duplex. And at that time, my older brother was living in that apartment. So we would frequent there occasionally too. But, you know, the big brother thing didn't really work out too well at that age. So <laughs> no, the, the 25 year old who, who dates teenagers is probably a little bit um, yeah. <laughs> more appealing to the teenagers. Yes. Yeah. Was he 25 or am I just... Uh, he had to be about that, yeah. He's quite a bit older. I know and, that much. And you all started hanging out with him at what age? 16. And that was just typical? It was accepted, I mean. Yeah, I mean, when you're 16, that seems awesome. You know, like, oh my god, he wants to hang out with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that must be really cool. <laughs> you're in a band, and oh yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. cool. and from what I've seen... It's, it seems like he's still kind of continuing that pattern. He's still with much younger people and hasn't really grown up. Uh, dating a girl that looks exactly like Keely did in high school. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I, I could comment, but I don't want to. <laughs> leave that one alone. Yeah, I'll leave it alone. Um, 
but I think, you know, his role in all this is, is very interesting just because he was like a huge part of the drama that kind of tore it all apart. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, it's sad to think, you know, like you, it seemed like such a prolific group like mm-hmm. of friends, like a, a real click, like you maybe should have had like a reality show about your misadventures, <laughs> <laughs> maybe on MTV. Um, <laughs> and then everything just fell apart because of a mistake that, that Brianna had made. And unfortunately, and we talked about this in the last episode, when a girl and a guy make a mistake, it's very common for everyone to just hate on the girl and to, right. like, you know, most definitely forgive the guy. <laughs> Um, and the falling out made it so you hadn't really spoken to her in a few weeks Yeah, no. before, before everything happened in March. So does that, does that frustrate you now? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It drives me nuts. Um, there wasn't a reason to not be friends anymore. You know, it, it wasn't, it was petty. It was childish. It was, who gives a crap about Mike Stebbins like seriously in the big picture of life it it just it's really unfortunate that I allowed his bad choices to take that from me and you were a kid too and 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 it's and it is his fault (laughs) you know like when you looking back it's like at the time you all saw yourselves as equals but he was he was an adult and you guys were kids um and it it tore this this really nice group of friends apart so it's Mm -hmm. it's just it's very sad and and I'm sorry that you lost that time with her because I feel like you're a very uh detail-oriented person just from my conversations with you so I I wish you were around during that time because I feel like I feel like it would have been really helpful but Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So was the last time you saw her at that party where the fight happened between her and Keely? No. Um, I saw her, I don't know, Time timelines are hard, but I'd say within a week of her disappearance, I had seen her. Um, she was actually turning onto my mom's road as I was coming off it. Um, and she was in a truck. And I was in a little car, so I stopped her and I said, I got out for a minute and I said, let me see your face. And she picked her sunglasses up and showed me her face. And I laughed and got back in the car and we left because I was being a snotty bitch. (laughs) I I honestly think that you guys would have gotten past it. I do too. I do too. It was only, it was only a couple weeks. Right. Right. It wasn't a long time. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a shame because I, I know you still love her. Like, you're still speaking out for her. You're very active on the Missing Brianna Maitland Facebook page. This has affected you in so many ways. Like, one of the most touching things I've heard you say is, you know, our, our children know your name. You know, it's, you've, you've passed on those memories to your children, and I know Megan has as well. So it's, yeah, it, it's, it's honestly the saddest story, and a, you know, a big element of why it's sad is that you guys, you know, w- weren't together. Right. And, like, like you, like you wished you'd had been. When you first heard that, you know, her car was found abandoned or did you hear that she was missing first or that her car was found first? Um, we heard that she was missing first. Um, and oh, the rumors were awful. I, one of the first ones, it was, Hillary picked us all up for school (laughs) and we used to park near the little town park and then walk over to the high school together. And there was a lot of kids that would gather there before school. And I remember one of the first rumors, some kid came over to our group and said, I heard they found Brianna naked tied to a tree in the woods up in Berkshire. What? And I don't think we even made it in the school building for maybe two minutes that day the rumors were so extreme we all just turned around and left and uh went to head up to where they said they found her car and that's yeah so we went to head up there and we stopped by mcdonald's for some reason whoever wanted mcdonald's and that's when low nathaniel jackson pulled up next to us at the drive-thru and 
told us if he went down for it, we'd end up just like she did. <clears throat> so I didn't realize that was all the same day that you, that the same day that you heard these horrible, I mean, thinking about your friend like that must've just conjured up the worst feelings for you. Ooh, yeah. And then, and then you get threatened and menaced by another adult who's messing around with kids. Why? Like literally so terrible threatening you guys calling you names i'm killy said that he called you guys bitches and oh yeah, yeah. he was cool. he was foul he was a scary guy <laughs> so how did i wonder how he already knew about it because so it happened i think it was a friday a friday night that she went missing and then so you're at school on monday i wonder right. was it was it already in the media maybe that he had it's possible i'm not sure so after you got McDonald's, did you guys just go home or did you end up going to the site? Uh, we went up and we were actually told that we couldn't be there. So they asked us to leave and as much as we hated to, we respected that, you know? What did you see when you were there? Uh, the hole from where her car was. Um, there was a lot of people there. They were... Um, I don't think they had started the search yet, like officially, but there was a lot of local people there poking around, you know, looking through the big field behind the building and all that. And uh, I don't remember who it was that told us we needed to go, but it was obviously someone res we respected enough to listen. Right. So, so maybe a police officer or? It, could have been. it very well could have been. I wish I could remember better, but I don't. Do you remember what? kind of led you guys to go there was it just to kind of see it for yourselves if it was true yeah yeah I think so I mean we didn't know what to do <laughs> you know like what what do you do even now I wouldn't know what to do if I got a, a call like that or got information like that I don't I don't know you just kind of blindly react and your b body takes over and your brain will catch up later <laughs> Yeah, and it and it makes sense to go to the to the last place she was seen. You you probably felt really helpless. Yeah, yeah. I don't think any of us really believed it right off. Right. Do you yeah, feel like yeah. you were all kind of still mad at her at that point? And, and yeah, like yeah. So I, it was probably kind of easier to like distance that a little bit, like in your minds. Like it's how, how can you process that my friend's missing and we and things aren't right with us? You know, we haven't made up. So it's like, oh, this isn't real. This is right. We'll be back. And when you saw that hole in the house, you must have said, okay, this is true. Because, you know, they, they said this is how her car was and the house is damaged. What were your first thoughts? I mean, you know something happened at that point. I think I could still somewhat justify it in my head that, oh, she was at a party. She pulled off on the side of the road. Oops, put it in reverse and set it drive. You know, it was it was a lot of denial <laughs> um, I thought she would come back for years you know but right. definitely those first few months I expected her to walk in at any point and that would be I think a lot of people's first thoughts was that you know she she was in trouble you know she had she had crashed her car and maybe was like embarrassed and right. was hiding out because it is a little embarrassing if you get your if you get your car stuck in a house by accident you can't get it out it's <laughs> That's, that kind of sucks, but yeah. I mean, I, and, and if you're in denial about something really being real and something being potentially grim, it's like, oh, it, maybe she just doesn't want to right. you know, tell her parents that she did this or uh, can't face them is embarrassed. I mean, but then again, <laughs> from what you've told me, she doesn't seem like someone that gets embarrassed too easily. <laughs> true. Very true. <laughs> this is a, a very funny, um, <laughs> willful, brave kind of, kind of person. <laughs> yeah. Yes. She did what made her happy. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny way to describe her. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Live her life to the fullest. Yes. By her own rules. <laughs> right. So at the very beginning of all of this, was James going to your school? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Was Bree the only one that had, had left in, and the rest of you had graduated? Um, actually, I dropped out my senior year, so after she went missing. Okay. Um, the following year, I only went back for like a month. Um, same with Megan, actually. 
um, Sydney and Keeley graduated, as did Hillary. But, yeah. I, I imagine the situation wasn't was a contributing factor to having trouble finishing. Yeah, definitely. Do you remember seeing James around in school in the initial days after her disappearance and, and talking to him about it? No. Maybe he was out of school at that point. I Yeah, I don't actually remember seeing him for quite a while after we found out, actually. He may have been out of school, but it was very common for those boys to hang out at the park I mentioned. And then we would get out of school and go over and see them all. Um, but yeah, I can't pinpoint James for a while after that, actually. Yeah, the only reason I ask is, you know, I wonder if when people started talking about it, like, it would be interesting to know, like, him putting two and two together, because a lot of people think when he saw her car that night that he had the same thought that you did, like, oh, right. he's probably just in trouble, and, like, I don't want to get her in more trouble. So it's just, I, I wonder, I was just wondering if you would see him put two and two together, because he had to have at some point. Right, and, right. And so when you say those guys, like, hanging out in the park, was that like, James, Mike, etc yeah not so much mike but yeah it was the older boyfriends <laughs> <laughs> <Of some girls. laughs> mike was too old but <laughs> okay so he he wouldn't hang around the school no no we had that limit at least <laughs> right but that uh, unlike low and and street when they hang around the school yes unbelievable yeah that's where i met them actually it was on the corner of the park across the street from the school. And Lo was offering me a bag of marijuana and a trip to New York City to take me shopping. No oh, thanks. <laughs> they're just so, they're so calculated. Yes. Like, what they were doing. Like, 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 like uh, guilty yeah. of this or not, they are predators. Like, I'm Absolutely. sorry. But. I mean, the, the number of people who prey upon children in this story that we <laughs> glossed over already is just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. They should have never been allowed on school property. I don't know how that was even, how was that even allowed? I don't know. It's Enosburg, Vermont. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and they victimized a lot of kids when, like in the long, in the long term, like getting people addicted to drugs, like they, they were successful in their mission to, to ruin lives and, and make money off of that. Most definitely. Disgusting. Did you see Lo after that incident at McDonald's? Mm. No. Nope, that was the last time I saw him. And what about what about Street? Like was he someone that was seen frequently by you? No. No. <laughs> I would only see him with Lo and I didn't see Lo often, thankfully. Right. After after Lo made those comments to you and your friends at McDonald's, were you thinking, oh, this has to be the guy? Like, why, why is he so angry? We were dead set. It was him, 200%, not a doubt about it. He took our friend. And, and why did he think that you guys were going to, like, say something about him? Like, what, if you guys, it's, it's like, what do you mean we're not, I'm not going down for this? <laughs> like, no idea. He, um, later we learned that, uh, I don't know, a friend of Megan's older sister, this girl's name is Tori, um, she actually traveled out of state with Lo and Street, and they tried to sell her body. <laughs> so I don't know if he thought we already had that bit of information, but we didn't. Um, I, don't, I don't know. So you found that out after? So you didn't know that at the time? It's, it is possible that they could have been concerned about, you know, other illegal activity. That, that does make sense. Right. They were definitely selling crack and cocaine and whatever they possibly could up here. So he was intimidating, very much so. <clears throat> have you ever seen him, like, shake anyone down for money or get pissed at anyone? No. Okay. So when you say he's scary, it was just based on that one incident. I mean, and that's scary enough for anyone, but... Um, there was a couple times I went with Keely and hung out with them, but it was just like, go drive around dirt roads for a while and smoke some weed. Um, 
And the one time he dropped me off at my house and my poor mother, I put her through so much, (laughs) but that was the one person when I got out of his car, he had a two seater. So he got out of the driver's seat to let me out of the back. And my mother was horrified, like (laughs) poor lady. She's like, I got the worst vibes from that guy. And of course I'm like, oh, it's cause he's black mom. Like, no, it wasn't. It's cause he, he had a monster. 30 or whatever he was. (laughs) No. He was evil. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I would be so upset if, if my daughter was spending time with people that were drug dealers. Shout out to moms everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once it was confirmed that, that Brianna's gone, she's unaccounted for, you said that you, you really felt for a long time that she was going to come back. Oh, yeah, definitely. So did that sort of make it so you were able to proceed somewhat normally with, with the friends or... Or, I mean, I imagine probably deep down you, you knew that she wasn't, but right, but probably just to survive each day, you had a hope, yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. I want to say it was probably like seven years in, not probably, it was seven years in when that hope went, you know, when I was able to actually accept the fact she's gone like she's she's not coming home she's not it's not happening after that amount of time you gotta think like put yourself in a situation let's say you're being held against your will somewhere seven years you're gonna get your hands on a phone you're gonna send a letter there's gotta be a way that you can reach out like it's just or if she was kept that long, which I don't believe she was, <clears throat> but if she was, would you not fight who had you, whether they killed you or not? Like, you're just going to stay for that length of time? I don't know. I just feel like that amount of time was just, it was too much. It's too much. And here mm-hmm. we are 10 years later. <laughs> right. And that was kind of like your, like, that was like your limit. Like, that was your boundary. You had reached it. And you were like, this is, it got to the point where I can't imagine my friend wouldn't have done this or wouldn't have done that yes it's so it's been you know almost 16 years the um the date is march 19th so that's i mean it's it's getting to be almost longer than she was alive it's 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 wow. un- it's terrible and in such a small town where you can keep nothing secret up here nothing nothing (laughs) everybody knows everything about everyone I mean quarantine helps that chill a bit (laughs) (laughs) well it's funny that you say that because you know there's been so there's been so much rumor in this case like and and you've heard it all (laughs) you know from from day one all all these horrible stories that have never been able to be substantiated so someone could say oh well like you know Katie just said no one can keep a secret up here maybe that's that's the result of that. Maybe all of these rumors are just the truth, but have you ever thought that maybe someone was spreading rumors on purpose? Yes. Yes, definitely. Definitely. To get, I don't know. I was, I've been paranoid about everybody. Um, <laughs> you know, Keely, for example, has been a good friend for 20 years and there's times I've questioned her. There's, I don't know. It's it's a crazy situation to have to live through. It really is. It yeah. is. And and Mike was your friend too. And I know that your perspective is different now. But like it, it, having to having to question people that are that are in your circle is yeah. Bad. It's yeah. scary. <clears throat> so when you when you questioned Keely, did you ever like say anything to her face, or was it all just kind mm. of? No, no. I yeah, we spoke about it a few times. Um, the concerns that I had, or things that don't sit right with me and she has eased my mind enough you know yeah it's hard we we're both addicts we're both in recovery um I know how well my memory doesn't work (laughs) so I'm sure that she has the same thing so there's gonna be questions that are unanswered because I didn't think to ask them until we were in our 30s you know so and and who knows maybe some of the things that don't sit right are things that were said because of lapses in memory you know right because there were a couple things you know just like I've heard different things about who was at the party like 
um, and where the assault took place. And I, and I don't know if that's willful dishonesty from anybody or if it's just right. they don't remember because right. it was so long ago and everyone was using drugs. And so just, and, and I know that we've been through this, but for people that haven't heard your perspective of it, um, you were at that party. Who was there that you remember? Um, Keely had rode with my then boyfriend and I. Um, my brother was there. Um, Tyler Stone was there. That was Megan's boyfriend at the time. Meg was there. Um, James. Um, there was a bunch of people, but Brianna was there, obviously. Uh, Hillary. Uh, and I think that's it off the top of my head anyway. Yeah. Do you recall her showing up with James? I remember her sitting in James's truck. I don't remember them pulling in, but I, I do remember her sitting in the passenger seat. <clears throat> he said that she was kind of like threatening her and trying intimidating her throughout the evening before that assault happened. Did you see any of that? I did. Um, really scary. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, we were all maybe 120 pounds at the time, but Keely was the one you didn't want to mess with. <laughs> she hits like a man. Um, and she, yeah, I remember it was two rooms that the party was in. And like the first room was where most of the people stayed throughout. And then the second room was a, a pallet shop, I guess, where they build pallets. So there was a bunch of pallets in that other room. And I remember Brianna at one point going in there and Keely followed her and I followed Keely because I know what's going to happen. <laughs> and uh, they had words at that point. Brianna really didn't say much back to Keely other than the fact that she was sorry. Um, and that wasn't enough for Keely. So Brianna wanted to leave and she went out and was waiting for James to take her home. And that's when Keely went out. She told her to get out of the truck. Brianna refused. She said, get out of the truck. I'm going to hit you. <laughs> and, you know, she hit her twice that I remember. And that was the result. <clears throat> did you, and then she just took her. Go ahead. Did you, did you actually see her get hit? Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. That was probably pretty brutal to witness. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Someone sitting, you know, I mean, I don't know if her seatbelt was in, you know, sitting in a, in a, in a car seat, you're kind of in this prone position. You can't really get anywhere and, and to have someone wailing you in the face through a window, but you said she hits like a man. So that's, had, by the way, did she, has she ever hit you? Is that how you know? <laughs> I've just seen her knock her share of people out. Okay. Oh yeah. So, you, so that wasn't the only fight you've seen her uh, start. Oh. Okay. We were an overly feisty bunch, <laughs> to say the least. So did James witness it too? I, I don't know. I don't know. I remember Keely and I and my then boyfriend on the passenger side of the car, and I, I don't remember anybody other than that. There could have been a ton of people there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, you mean like outside watching? Like, right, yeah. right. Huh. Because I could see, like, people, like, especially, like, immature, drunk people being, like, thinking that would be something to see, which is, obviously, it's not. It's terrible. Right. Yeah. I would imagine, because everyone knew it was going to happen, so I'm sure that there was other people around. There had to be. Oh, was Keely telling everybody that she was going to beat her up? I mean, she was telling Bree she was going to beat her up in front of everybody, so. <laughs> okay, yeah, because when she said she was intimidating her and threatening her, I, I don't know exactly what she was saying. She was saying, I'm going to kick your ass at, you know, later outside. Yeah. Okay. Get ready to fight. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know? And then James took her home. She didn't get out of the car. Uh, James got right in the car and took her home, and that was, that was the end of it. That was it, yeah. Were you around when Keely was charged for the crime? Yeah. Um, like, I don't remember her getting picked up by the police or anything like that, but I rem remember Keely telling me that she was getting charges pressed on her. Was And how was Keely feeling about that? Was she upset? Like, I, I imagine she would be. Yeah, definitely. But I also remember 
I don't know if it's just because I knew Brie or if it was actually a thing that was said that we knew that the charges weren't coming from Brianna, but from her parents, you know, so it was kind of like a, I don't know what that mattered, but it did. <laughs> so, so she was probably a little bit surprised because you guys are saying like this wasn't, that wouldn't be Brianna's behavior to press charges. Even if right. she was injured and upset about this incident, she wouldn't do that. No, no. So that's just kind of like not being a snitch kind of attitude or? Exactly. <laughs> so you. <laughs> and she kind of, you know, she kind of knew she screwed up. I mean, not that she deserved what she got, but a smack would have been okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Messed up as that is, you know. This is kind of like out of left field, random, but you were in the car with her a lot. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering what kind of driver was she? Was she like a, like a dangerous, <laughs> reckless driver? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, but no. Like, I mean, she learned to drive a lot sooner than the rest of us, I think. Okay, so like my house had a TV, many TVs, um, microwave, <laughs> and Brianna's house or her parents' house was very simple let's say beautiful spot tons of land um but I remember being like so perplexed that she had to make popcorn on the stove like I'd I didn't know what to make of that like they didn't have cable or satellite or and back then when I first met her um she had I want to say it was a 1974 jeep um like a four speed this thing was freaking nuts it didn't have brakes she had to downshift to slow down she had like this mile long insane mountain driveway (laughs) so I feel like she had some experience in crazy driving um but yeah she she was definitely her personality came through in her driving too she was a kook (laughs) (laughs) did you think that she knew how to do like intricate kind of things like backing into a parking spot or parallel parking did you ever see her do things that were maybe a little bit difficult for a younger driver I don't know if I saw it but I would definitely assume that she could that she could yeah Yeah. because I you know someone sent me a message after uh I released the last episode saying you know the way that her vehicles backed in like what if what if she saw someone parked like someone had parked you know facing the barn and she recognized the car like what if she backed in so that they would be kind of like face to face like sort of like how cops will park to talk yeah um and and maybe like pass a joint or something and I said oh that's kind of an interesting idea but but then it's you know there's also the thought like did she even back her car in because a lot of teenagers wouldn't do that but you think she probably could I I do. I do. I think she would try it, definitely. And if if she was using drugs, it would be very simple to, oops, go a little bit too far in that giant car of hers. Right. And, and it wouldn't even have to be, like, her intention to park resulting in her car crashing. Like, it could have just been, like, her car was already in that position and then she moved quickly. Right. You know? Because right. everyone's just trying to explain the weird car accident it, it is bizarre and like you said if if there yeah. were drugs involved that could easily explain mm-hmm. you know whether it's brianna that left it like that or somebody else right. it, it could explain the very odd way that it was left because like everybody assumes when they see it like that person was drunk or that person was something yeah maybe not maybe she was scared or yeah. maybe the legs were too long to hit the gas we don't know i don't know Right, because she was she was what like five four. She was she was a short petite yeah. girl. Yeah. So if if someone else was behind the wheel, that that could happen where they get their legs stuck. But it's also you know like you said, she could have been really scared and trying to escape and and maybe put the gear on the wrong you know put it right, in the exactly. and drive. I mean, let's be real. I do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it. I've I've done it. I, I've never done it and then floored it. But right, I, right. I, I put it in the wrong gear and it was like, oh, whoa. <laughs> Ring wrong way. <laughs> that could have been bad, you know? Yeah. And then another kind of random question would be, 
I mean, there were there are random spots like that all around. It's such a desolate, uh, sparse area up there mm-hmm. where there's, you know, just random landmarks. You said in a conversation that we've had in the past that that wasn't really a place where people would hang out, though. No. The desperate no. place. No, we had sneaky off-the-road spots to hang out and pass said joint <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> you know? Like, we had, yeah, there's, I could point out 20 from Enosburg to where her car was found, which is, what, maybe 15 miles. Better hidden spots. <laughs> less chance of getting caught that she knew of you know that we all knew of probably like if she if she were there to meet with someone it probably wasn't with the usual group of friends because that's not a typical maybe it was someone else's spot but not right right wasn't ours (laughs) right and and like you said you guys weren't even really talking during that time but I guess she she, it seemed like she maybe was talking to James because he he took her away after um, Keely punched her so that was kind of like maybe one of few people in that group. And right. it's hard to say that he was in your group. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. The boys were always kind of on the outside, but yeah, James was one of them. <laughs> and James and, and Mike, were they close? Very. Yeah, very. Okay. So when when you guys would all gather at his house, James and the other boyfriends you said the older boyfriends were usually also there and it was like a a big group yeah yeah I would say like Keely Mike and James probably spent more time together than all of us as a group um but yeah there was still a lot of time that we were all together so Keely was pissed and, and that's the word that she used she was pissed that you know after all this with Mike, now Brianna's hanging around with James because she also liked James. <laughs> so yeah. it's like these these two girls like the same like the same guys. Like <laughs> they're just yeah, yeah it's, it's sort of like a love rectangle as I think I, I said once because it's just so complicated. <laughs> it's like wow, now she's she's angry about one guy and now Brianna's Brianna's apparently crossed the boundary with with James too. So it was just a, a big old mess. But yeah, it, it probably tore things apart a little bit with that three-person dynamic you were describing James, Mike Keeley after that happened it, that was probably a little more complicated yeah I'd say I'd say I mean they didn't really miss much of a beat there but I'm sure they had it out a few times over it <laughs> and on that on that topic like of missing a beat like did everything kind of proceed as normal with the rest of you guys and in the way that you guys were kind of living and, and spending time no Nope. Um, it's kind of when we started to part ways, honestly. Um, maybe about a year in, not part ways so much, but go about lives separately and not spending multiple hours together every day. Um, it's also when my addiction became a serious, <clears throat> serious thing in my life. Um, and that became the focus of my life for many years, unfortunately. But yeah. I mean, the, the role that addiction plays in all of this is, is, is it's significant. I mean, the, so. the, the thing with, with Keely probably never would have happened if it weren't for addiction. And, and it's, I mean, it sounds like really, even if Lowe and Street weren't directly involved, and obviously we have no evidence directly linking them to it, but like, mm-hmm. if, if they weren't directly involved, they were indirectly involved because they introduce that into all of your lives yes yep <clears throat> exactly so with these you know sort of disagreements or i wouldn't say disagreements but when you've kind of come to keely and said this doesn't sit right with me has that happened recently or was that usually like closer to the time when she went missing um it was a few years in And it was Megan and I were together, I think, you know what, I was living in this house, so it was within the past six years. Um, And Megan was here with me, and I don't remember what exactly got us spinning, but it got us spinning enough to where we actually called and video chatted with Keel about it. Um, I wish I could remember the exact thing that pushed us to make that call, but I don't. 
I think that's right around the time where I really started blaming Stebbins. So yeah, I think we called to kind of call her out on his lies. And, you know, she was his, his girlfriend and, and she was, you know, she had it out with Brianna because of him. So I could see why, why you might go there when you're thinking about Stebbins and, oh, you know, think about all the things that he's lied about. And you look back and, and he had said something in your presence that was very disturbing to you. He had said something about the life draining out of her or the light, the light in her eyes or something disturbing. And you knew that he was talking about Brie. That was how long after? Oh, gosh. At that point, I was renting her room off, Michael. Um, oh, God. I don't know. <laughs> I want to say maybe four, four years in. Yeah, I was 20, 20 or 21. Yeah, so that makes sense. Right. And then other, other people have said that too, that they've witnessed him, you know, drunkenly or getting upset about this. And it's, it's hard to explain away innocently. That's for sure. And it, and it does make you wonder, like, if, if he were, then like, where was she? Right. In, in all this. And, and was it something that, that, that she was a part of or, or not? And then there's, and it's not just Mike that, that drunkenly talks about Brianna when, when, and, and makes weird confessions. It's, there's Rodney too. It's, it's like, what is, what is going on with these guys? Yeah. And it doesn't they, just happen. It doesn't. I'm sorry. I've done a lot of drugs in my life and I have never once admitted to a murder that I didn't do. You know, like I've never once made any such crazy comments. I, I don't know. So what, what other comments were there? Yeah, I mean, it's said that Rodney left a note before killing himself or trying excuse me and failing that he left a note apologizing for taking her and that he just couldn't deal with the guilt anymore and I don't know it's so crazy because it, you know someone that I've known for years tells me that story and then three years later claims that she never said it it's just yeah and, and um, I, other people have said that to me too that like now they act like that never happened. And yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> you know, what, what is just, someone slept with someone's boyfriend. This is a girl's life. Like this is a whole, a whole different ball game. You don't keep secrets when it comes to this stuff. It's just, I don't know. It's sick. It, it absolutely is. And we don't really know what those guys were up to that night. It sounds like James was, with Stebbins that night I don't right. know I don't know about Rodney I don't know about anybody else like were you, were, were, were you at that party that night or were no. you in Canada just kidding <laughs> no I wasn't I don't know where I was honestly <laughs> but I used to not go to Rodney's and you know that was okay this is gonna be really judgy of me but that's where the crackheads went <laughs> they, they went to Rodney's I never got into that drug like that. My thing was opiates. And at that point, I wasn't into those either. <clears throat> but I never went to Rodney's house other than to drop Keely off. Um, okay. And is that where they were that night? They were at Rodney's? I don't know. Oh. It's me. That's, I thought they were in Canada, but coming back that way would make sense that they were... Yeah, I, I think that... You go by there coming home from Canada if you live in Montgomery. You don't. <laughs> yeah, and I'm pretty sure that since then, they were like, yeah, no, that, that, that was a lie. <laughs> but it's like, why were, why were they lying? That's right. it's so weird. Like, I understand him not... Like, I, I don't fully... I, it, was, it wouldn't be what I would do in that position if I saw a friend's car like that. Even right. if I thought that, like, they had done it because they were drunk I would still be worried enough to do something maybe not call the police but like tell someone try to find them myself but he did nothing right, right. he kept driving yeah it, it, I mean that's that's pretty crazy to me but I think that lying about where you were and lying about the time it's like it goes beyond not trying to get yourself into trouble it's, it's just weird it doesn't add up at all right and I mean, and if, and if it was an accident, it, it seems like the timeline for that is a little bit weird too, right? Like with the discovery of the car. 
Yeah. Yeah. Just nothing adds up. <laughs> and, and no one really, I mean, out of those men, as far as you know, had any reason to harm her. No, no, no. Definitely they were her no. friends. Right. Right. Yeah. None of, I mean, if, if it made sense, we wouldn't be here talking about it right now. Right. But very true. <clears throat> very true. Yeah. I guess at, at, at this point, at, you know, the, are you guys going to have a vigil or anything like that? Just, I mean, I know there's a pandemic and yeah, it's been so long. What we did last year is just Sid, Sydney, Megan, and I just got together and had dinner and spent the evening together. So it'll likely look a whole lot like that again. <clears throat> yeah. So you said Sydney was there too? is she someone that you think might ever want to talk or she would definitely talk to you I'm sure oh, cool. of it <clears throat> yeah. cool. because I, I I've heard about her a lot but I don't think I've ever had the chance to talk to her I can help link that up if you'd thank like you. thank you so when you three were together uh you just kind of talked about her and and what she meant to you yep yep just it's hard to do it in the public's eye, I guess. Like this, I don't mind doing. Like I'm talking to you. It's like talking to one of my friends, you know? Yeah. Whereas when we do like the vigil and the news wants to come and ugh, I just don't want it anymore. <laughs> I honestly, I, I don't blame you. It's, it's so uh, personal and emotional right. and, and to have cameras in your face, that's, that's not the best. Yeah. So we're just over that part of it, so. Yeah, I, mean, I get it. I still message all the local news stations every year, and I say, hey, you know, her anniversary's coming up. If you're going to run a story, now's the time. And that's my part, and that's what I can do. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think you do a lot. You are, are very active on these pages, and obviously you can't be, like, posting every day. You know, <laughs> you're, you're very busy. But, like, when, when you do post, it's always very poignant and, and powerful and Thank you. The love that you have for her is is clear. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't faded. <laughs> yeah, and I I just wish that you guys could have worked it out. But I I think she, I think I, I she probably knew that that you loved her and I think so. I like to think so. She, I think she forgave me. I think so. I think so. Well, and especially because you didn't punch her. <laughs> right. It <I> wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so oh, if, man. if you could talk to her again I mean it's probably something that's even crazy to imagine like picturing what she'd even look like I'm sure she'd still be adorable and stylish and cute and <laughs> crazy and random and yeah <laughs> bubbly and what what, do you, what would you say to her Mm, you had to. Um, I don't know that there would be words for a long time. Um, just, I miss you. I love you. And I hope there's peace. You know, be it if she was alive and I could say it, or if somehow we could connect otherwise, you know, I just, I would want to know that, that there's peace for her. She she deserves that. I yeah. After all of this, I mean, there's there's no, it's nothing. Uh, there's nothing peaceful about about the aftermath of of going missing, especially it seems like in an area like yours where there's just rumors and negativity and people not doing their jobs like they maybe should have, and people who you thought you were, that that were your friends and they turn out not to be. So it hasn't been peaceful for the people that cared for her. But I hope that she. I hope that she's had some peace and, and hasn't had suffering. Yeah. And I hope that, that her family can have that peace someday too. <laughs> <laughs>